compassionate and kind to others always because you have no idea the fears that are going through them in the simplest things. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Different Ability Podcast. I am your girl, Katie Fortune, and I have an amazing guest here today, a returning guest, Jess Gumness. I'm so excited you're here. And if you are watching this on YouTube, I guess it's really not a podcast. So, hey, whatevs, Uh, let's roll with it. So, Jess, thank you so much for being back. And for anyone that didn't listen to your other episode, which they should, and you should probably head over there right now to listen. Well, wait, listen to this one first and then go back over and listen to the other one. Uh, Tell me a little bit about yourself and tell everyone that's listening a little bit about you. All right. Well, I'm Jess. I live in Wisconsin, in northern Wisconsin, and I have two boys, two and five. Um, I am currently a stay-at-home mom, a full-time student, um, working on campus for a professor, and working on campus for my practicum as a disability service coordinator. That's me. So in other words, you do everything. (laughs) Uh (laughs) For real, for real though. Like that's a lot of things Uh and you're awesome at all of them. So thank you so much for being back here. My Northern Wisconsin friend, (laughs) you're like wearing flannel today. It even makes it better. So I I love it. I love (laughs) it. So, okay. Why I'm asking Jess to come back is because, well, millions of reasons. She's going to be on here a lot. You're going to probably get sick of her Um, just as much as you get sick of me. (laughs) Uh, But why I'm asking you on is because you sent me a text message or a Marco Polo or Snapchat or something after you listened to one of my recent podcasts Mm -hmm. about um, learning about myself and learning about how I read. And so... Tell me a little bit about that and, you know, we can talk about what you actually sent to me and then it just like kind of spiraled into like, oh my gosh, you need to come back on and I want you to talk about it too, because then it shows that I'm not the only one that's felt this way. And I'm sure there's a million people out there, but it's, it's a real thing. And I kind of want to bring a little bit more awareness to it. So tell me a little bit about what you heard on that podcast and uh, I, I can't remember what episode it was. I'm terrible. I should know these things. Um, I'll That's add it. Episode. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I don't remember the number. I will figure it out and I'll put it in here somewhere, um, in the video or in the recording. So just stay tuned. I'll put that in there so you can listen to it as well. But tell me a little bit about what you heard and what kind of like hit you when you listened to that episode. Yeah. So I was listening to your episode actually while driving to campus, my only podcast time that I get. Um, But you were talking about when you were in school, I can't remember if you said middle school or high school, but you would sit in the classroom, like specifically English class. And if you had to read, if it was time to do a reading from the book and everybody had to have their turn, you would count ahead and be like, okay, I'm like the fifth person in line. So let me count my paragraphs. Here's my paragraph. And you would read it. That is exactly what I would do. I like the instant the teacher would say like, we're going to all take turns reading instant panic, sweats, everything. And I would be like, okay, first I have to figure out are they going to start on the right side of the room or the left side of the room? Okay. So they're starting on the left side of the room. Now I need to count how many paragraphs I have. And the thing that I would always get nervous about is if there was a paragraph that was like two or three sentences long, and then paragraphs that were like five or six sentences long. So then they'd combine them. Like one student would maybe read two paragraphs and the other one would just read one. So then that would mess up my count and I would freak out. Yeah. And I hated it, but I would practice it over and over and over until it was my turn. And still, even I remember like I was reading it just fine, but the entire time I'm reading it, I was just feeling like I was being judged. I was going to stumble on a word, just, I don't know, just panic the whole time reading it. So, okay. So I'm sweating currently because it makes me so nervous, even thinking about it. Yes. I'm not kidding. Like, 
everything you said is exactly what I would fear. And what's so hard now that I'm out of all of that. Now, granted, if you asked me to read something in front of everyone right now, I'd be like, no, thanks. But no, thanks. <laughs> like, no, it doesn't go away, but th- there's things that we can obviously adapt and learn about ourselves. Right. Mm-hmm. But the thing that's so hard for me as an adult right now, looking back at our little selves doing that is we never listened to the rest of the class. We had no idea what was going on in the book or whatever we were reading. And that is so frustrating to me as an adult thinking that way, like Mm -hmm. just because I was nervous and not the best reader, I would beat myself up for all of those kids in front of me. And then it was even worse. Oh gosh, it was worse if we all got through and then they're like, oh, let's do another chapter. Why? Why would you do another chapter? Uh And I just, I'm not gonna lie. I envied some of the students that had no problem. They're like, oh yeah, I'll just read. It's not a big deal. And it's such a hard thing. And so that's why I just, I think one of my messages is be compassionate and kind to others always because you have no idea the fears that are going through them right. in the simplest things. I mean, really, some of you may be listening to this podcast or watching this video on YouTube and saying, wow, I have never had to worry about reading in front of people. I have never had to worry about sweating and being nervous and counting the kids And that is such a hard thing for me to even still comprehend that I had to sit there, not had to, but that's what I did because I was so scared. And then here, were you like this too, where you would read it so much and you're like, I got this conquered and then it's your turn and you freeze. Yes. Like that, like, and then, then you do stumble over every word, even though like the simplest words you'd, you'd like stumble because you were so nervous to read in front of everyone. Like yeah. that was terrifying. terrifying. I was almost like out of breath, just trying yes. to read it. And I'm an athlete. Yes. Like I, I'm not out of breath just reading. Like that's not the problem. It's like, I am in fr- like, it's not, it's not even like a stage fright thing. Mm-mm. It is a fear of judgment for my disability. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're oh. so right. And <clears throat> now knowing a little bit more about my different ability and my disability, like I, I kind of, not kind of, I really understand why it was so hard for me. Like my, right. I would read and then I'd jump ahead and then I'd go back and then words would flip or letters would flip. And yeah, of course it was going to be really difficult to do all of that. And that is just, it's just, a, it sucks. Cause I wonder how many books I never actually physically read, you know, like, oh. or heard or Mm-hmm. anything like I just am like I'm lucky I got good grades in school seeing the things that I had to do to be able to be somewhat similar to everyone else right, right. when you're little like that you want to be like everyone else because you don't want to be different now I'm sitting here 31 years old I want to be different and I love being different I love saying I'm different I'm awesome hashtag deal with it, you know, like just deal with me being different and I love it, but the fear is still here for me. I'm not going to pretend it's not, it's still a fear of mine. And I remember even in church, they would ask like, Oh, do you want to do a reading? No, (laughs) you know, like, like anyone, Hey, any of the kids, you know, in confirmation want to go do a reading in front of the entire church? Nope. I never volunteered for that. I would do everything in my power to get out of doing something like that. And But here I am, Jess, you know me more than pretty much anyone. I'm standing on stages in front of hundreds of right. people, someday thousands and maybe millions someday. And I have no problem standing in front of people. And no. by the way, total side note, I, you're going to kill it when you have to speak in front of people. This is a total uh-huh. other conversation we have to have, but <sighs> knowing that like, I don't have to read anything. Now, if I had to stand up and read something, no, 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 thanks. Have yeah. a good day. See you later. I just, and that, that hit me a lot. Like it also kind of made, it made me feel sad because you felt the same way. You're my friend, but it also made me like, okay, I wasn't the only one, but then I'm like, man, we need to get the word out there. So what else, what else have you like experienced that you can think about when you were a kid that I just wonder how much more we have in common, <laughs> common with that? Cause there was just spelling tests. That's a joke and a half. Oh, yeah. That's a whole nother podcast. It's like 
how many times do I have to pretend that I know how to spell these words and just get through the test to get the A or the B and get on with it and never have to worry about it again. Exactly. It's just, I think too, part of all that fear that we have, especially with reading in front of people, is we, with like learning disabilities, you have, it's a hidden disability. Nobody knows about it. Absolutely nobody knows about it. They just think you're normal and, or normal, I should say. Mm -hmm. And you just don't want to have that, that instant judgment of, oh, I can't read. I must be lazy. I must be dumb. I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, such a stigma and hidden disabilities. I mean, I don't want to cut different disabilities, but like if, if I have a missing arm or something, like you can physically see that I'm going to have difficulties and you have more compassion towards it. Yep. But when you have that hidden disability, it's just a fight with yourself on the inside. Yeah. And then with the world around you. Because I, you're so, it. you're so right. And it's so interesting. The more I talk about it and the more I connect with other people, you realize more people have these different abilities just like yeah. you do. And breaking that stigma. That's one of my biggest goals is to break the stigma that being different is bad. I want kids like my perfect little world would be kids walking down the street being like, I'm different. I'm cool with it. And adults doing the same, but learning at a young age so you can keep growing. And not to say I've had a bad luck. I haven't. And I know you haven't either. There are so many things now looking back, like, man, I wish I would have done X, Y, Z or I wish I would have, or wish things could have been different this way. And you, you, everyone will do that. Right. But I now being again, 31 years old at this recording of this podcast and going out there and being like, what can I do to help encourage, inspire and show others that being different is okay. But I don't want to pretend that it's easy because it's not. And these stories, like you just said, like the story about reading in reading class or English class and having to like count. That is a real thing. So I want to put this back into perspective because we did go through it quickly. Yeah. (laughs) Imagine yourself sitting down in your classroom and your teacher coming up and saying, Hey kids, today we're going to read out of this book and we're going to read this many chapters and each person's going to read a paragraph. Instant fear, instant panic, in your heart races, you're sweating, you're fidgeting, you're freaking out inside. Everything in your head saying you're going to you're going to stumble, you're going to not do good and blah 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 blah. And all you can do when you figure out right or left, right? The the right side of the room or the left side of the room, you count and you pray to Jesus that they don't read two paragraphs in a row or three and really throw you off. And even more that you pray you get a you get a paragraph that you know every word in. What happens if you don't know one of the words? Yep. That's mm-hmm. happened to me even to this day. It's like, wait, what is that word? Like, right. like I don't know. What is that word, you know? And so praying that you know those words or sitting there quietly telling yourself, okay, read this word. What is this word? Trying to sound it out, not yeah. completely out loud, but like within yourself so you can hear it. That's the stuff I want people to understand that that is real. And there are kids right now, hopefully listening to this, but right now in the world that do this every single day, just like we did. Yep. Well, and too, like you were saying with just that one word. So my, my learning disability is reading comprehension. So some people in order to figure out what that one word may be, may read a sentence a couple times or one time and understand what that word is. But for me, and like sentences sometimes don't make sense. Mm-hmm. And I have to read them probably four or five, six times before I understand the right content of what it is. Did the so, little monster wake up from his nap? Yeah, he was supposed to be sleeping and he decided otherwise. <laughs> and he's back to me. <laughs> this is real life, real life. Yes. So speaking on that real quick, Jess, I want to get into that a tiny bit. So you know, did you do a test on yourself? To- I want to, because you did your little test. I haven't had time to do any of my readings this week. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to try this because I know for a fact, I mean, even just reading my lecture notes that I have right now, very, it's not like 
formal reading. It's very just how, how you're listening to somebody talk. I still have to read them probably two or three times, like a section mm -hmm. in order to understand it. And then also listen to it in an audio version before I can understand it. Yep. So like you even knowing that, I, obviously you don't really have to do an actual test. And right. by a test, I literally just took whatever paper that teacher gave that day and mm -hmm. read it. And I'm like, okay, how many times is it going to take me to completely be able to talk about what was on that paper? Yep. You you know that that's kind of what you have to do it but it, that is so important because not only is it important because then now you know how you learn but now this is kind of crazy now you know your time management right like exactly it's gonna take me I'm not like everyone else and that's awesome but it's gonna take me a little bit longer to get through this stuff so I'm gonna have to schedule some time to get my homework done to get my lecture notes figured out to xyz whatever that is now you yep. can actually plan that and that's another thing if any teachers are listening just if you want to like take a note or two here it's so difficult to teach just for one person, like just as in like everyone's the same. Right. And like, I know I'm not a teacher. I'm not an educator. I give so much credit to all of our educators and our teachers, but please, if you teachers are listening, please, can you just give some more time for people yes. to read whatever you want them to read in class, even if it's not out loud, just a little extra time. Okay. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, when I was in class and the teacher's like, who's done? everyone's raising their hand. Of course, I'm going to raise my hand and look like everyone else. You think I don't want, I want to be the only one in the class that isn't done reading it. So I quickly skim and hope she doesn't ask me a question lower, lower on the page that I have no idea what they're talking about. Yep. So <laughs> maybe just a little extra time. And if someone maybe, and again, I'm not trying to tell you how to teach, but maybe if you say, Hey, let's read this piece of paper. We're going to talk about what it's on it. Um, if you get done early or if you're done, um, maybe just like write some notes and things, or there's a worksheet that you can work on or whatever that looks like, just so it's just a little bit of extra time. And that's what I'm so incredibly grateful for that. I did have an IEP or I do have an IEP and, um, we can get into this on a whole nother podcast because it could really take up a whole nother podcast is taking tests out of the classroom. So Jess, I'm like you, I, Yes. I am dyslexic, but I did have reading comprehension issues as well. I do. Right. right. And so that's kind of all encompassing in dyslexia, of course, but yeah. everyone's a little different, but um, <clears throat> reading and going out of the classroom for different testing was a savior for me because I can, again, we're going to do another podcast on this because all about testing. I did a test on myself as well about testing and took a test in the classroom, got a D, took the same test, not in the same order. All they, the teacher was all on board with it, took it outside of the classroom in my own room. Well, in the disability services room or whatever it was called back then. And I got an A and it wasn't the same. It, people thought, oh, well, you already had the answer. No, different types of, it was like a math test. So it was different types of math, different types of let. I couldn't cheat. None of that was happening. I wanted to know because I'm like, do I really need to leave? Yeah, I do. Because the second someone gets up and is like, oh, I'm done with the test now. I'm going to go hand it in, which drives me insane as well. Then I'm sitting here like I'm literally on page one and I'm not even close to being done mm -hmm. and they're done. Like, yes, I, it's, oh, don't judge yourself, Katie. Or, oh, you just need to be who you are. You know what? You're right. And I say that a lot, but it's hard. It's hard it to watch that. And that's just my couple of cents and I'm off my podium now. So well, so I'm going to touch on that too, though, because I didn't like in high school. No, I had the accommodation set aside where I could go to another classroom, but I had that stigma on me that I was dumb and lazy and I felt that. So I never really used the accommodations in high school. I I got at least slightly above average grades. I mean, I, they weren't astonishing by any means. Um, so I never did that because I knew, because I did it a couple times and I had friends ask, why are you leaving the classroom? Are you not I, like, do you get out of the test? And I was scared because I didn't, I didn't advocate for myself as well in high school. When I got to college though, I, I mean, thankfully the program I was in, Vogue Rehab, very oriented around disabilities and just like accommodating and everything. 
So I felt comfortable. And then I started using the testing center and that's when my grades finally picked up was college. So now, like even to this day, I have the accommodations and I'm getting grades that I never had in high school Mm -hmm. because I was okay advocating for myself in college. Oh, I love that you say that because again, I did use my accommodations. I... I must have just grew up that I just didn't care what anyone thought of me. I don't know. And that's okay. Like I'm not for everyone and I <laughs> like everyone, but I just knew that I knew I could, it's probably because I did those tests on myself because I was double guessing myself. And yeah, when people would ask, Oh, why are you leaving the classroom? Cause I'm awesome. And I <laughs> leave, you know, like I just like, it. Just, yeah. and sometimes I wouldn't even say anything. I just keep walking and did it hurt? Yeah, sometimes it did, but I just tried to keep telling myself, you know, this is what I need. I know I can do good. I really cared about my grades. You know, I wanted to do a good job, but that even right there just shows that it's so interesting how things are graded and how things are done in the United States. And again, I'm not trying to change the education system. Don't worry, but you are so smart, right? You know, you are, I know I am testing though. No, I'm not. I'm not good at testing. And there's many reasons why. But when you sit and talk to me, like, I know a million things and I keep learning every day. And they do say people with dyslexia or learning disabilities are so visually smart and so good at so many other. There are amazing actors, actresses, famous people like doesn't have to be actors and actresses to be cool by the way but like like people like Einstein things like that they're they are dyslexic and they're brilliant people and they have a learning disability but they're brilliant because they have other areas that they strive in and they use right so I think that was so great that you said that so thank you for saying that because we're on two different spectrums I used my accommodations in high school you did not and you showing yourself like in college and mind you just for anyone that's listening that's not in college right now and if you decide to go it was such a crazy flip in high school people would ask oh why are you in the special classroom or whatever and I would just walk away and again it's not like it didn't hurt but I just kept walking away and doing what I needed to do for myself and in college people were like wait, you get to leave, man. Can I, <laughs> like, everyone wants to, yes. you know? And yes. so everyone wanted to leave as well because they didn't want to be in, oh. in the classroom taking that test. So it, it, it is a flip, but just knowing, like you said, like that, that advocacy and knowing who you are, really yes. knowing who you are and what you are about will help you gain that confidence. Just like you, Jess, you have the confidence to be like, what? I'm going to the other classroom now. It's super cool. Or I'm going to the testing center because that's what I need. And what are people going to say? Like, well, come on, you're going to make fun of someone. They have to go take a test somewhere else, get a job, you know, <laughs> just like be a decent human. Right. So I just think that that's such a cool thing for you to talk about and be honest about, because there are people right now, again, hopefully listening to this podcast or watching this video show and on YouTube that are like, to do that. I don't want to. And then they hear your story, right? And they say, yeah. you know what? I should, I should just try it. Just try it. Use yeah. your accommodations if you can. If you aren't diagnosed for anything, but you feel like something's off or different or yes. that you need help, ask for it yep. and push even in high school, middle school, any of those times. It's push never forward. too late. Never, never, ever too late. Even out of college, doesn't matter. Push. Yeah. And so it just, it, it, that itself will help build your confidence. And so I, I'm so glad you said something about that. Cause again, testing could be a whole nother podcast episode. It is. And we should actually get into it. Cause you know, a lot of like the, the legal and the backstory and a lot of that stuff. I don't, I just live it. Like you were educated in it and you are learning about it every day being awesome yeah. and amazing. So Yeah. yeah. And my internship next semester is in a high school for transition services no one- to help understand that process. I am so excited. We have so much more to come. <laughs> like, <laughs> so excited uh, for that and for you. And I'm excited for that school that gets to have you help in that. Hey, like, before- my alumni. Woohoo. 
but that's important though. Like, like here's the thing, you know, you could be in disability services and teaching kids and things like that. And you may not have a disability yourself, but guess what you do. And so, you know, and you can literally relate to those kids and say, I know exactly how you're feeling because I am, I have a learning disability or I'm dyslexic. Like I am myself. I, I tell people that yeah. I know how you feel. Maybe not exactly everything, but I know how you feel because I felt it. And then talking about how did you go through that and whether it's right or wrong, it may not work for someone, but helping them get those opportunities and those different perspectives is such a cool thing. And that school is so lucky to have you. So lucky. (laughs) I'm just glad my high school has transformed so much from what it was when I was there. So yes, I'm glad to be a part of that and change the stigma. Yes. She's on the, we're on this bandwagon. Anyone else want to add and jump on here? The bandwagon of changing the, the stigma of being different is bad. Being different is amazing. And my amazing, amazing friend, Jess is, has always been on board, but is right there with me. And we're talking about it all the time. We do. Like if you guys saw our Marco Polos or Snapchats, she'll like be like, Oh my gosh, in my class today, I did. Oh, I learned this Katie. Oh, Katie. And then like, (laughs) Oh, you need to talk about this. And I'll be like, girl, I have a new idea. Let's talk. (laughs) So I'm the idea queen. If you could see my idea wall over there, it's pretty embarrassing. Um, But I just really appreciate you taking this time. And I appreciate little Clay um, letting us um, chit chat here, even though he did wake up from his nap way earlier than expected. (laughs) Way earlier, like (laughs) maybe a 10 minute nap. Yeah. He's like, I just need a little breather mom from you. And I'm just, and then I'm coming full force. (laughs) For real. I'm going to feed his belly and put him back to sleep hopefully soon. (laughs) Can I too? Can I go take a nap? Okay. Um, Before we leave, anything else you want to say, even just on these, these different topics here, if not, that's okay. But if you have anything else you want to say um, to encourage or inspire anyone that is feeling those same feelings that you and I have felt. And again, those feelings don't completely go away. Cause when you were talking about them, I was sweating over here. because I felt this, like the nerves coming in um, anything else um, before we leave here. Um, I mean, we're under this umbrella term of a hidden disability And it's not going to ever go away, but we have to learn how to adjust the world for ourselves, I guess is a good way to do it. If I could (laughs) grab my mic right now, I'd mic drop that. That is so good. That is so good. And it's, again, learning about yourself Mm -hmm. to be able to know how you're going to navigate the world you want to live in, right? And so we learn differently. And again, you look at myself or Jess. Right. You would never know. There were times that I had to literally give a piece of paper to a teacher to prove that I had a learning disability. So they would let me leave the classroom and go take a test in another classroom. Right. Yep. Which now it's kind of changing. It it's is. All, it's all done electronically. So you, that takes away a little bit of the pressure. True. True. I'm just saying, but right. that's real. <laughs> so, yeah. But it it's not, and it's nothing against the teachers, by the way. Like, I appreciate them no. being like, no, Katie, and these teachers, the ones that had done that with me, we were always like joking around. I was in sports with them. They were, you know, whatever. But part of me is like, well, that's really nice of you, but no, it's real. I'm not lying to you, you know? And so you have to, it's kind of, you're, you're right. It's kind of an uphill battle even. So mm-hmm. I have people to this day when they listen to my podcast or they hear about my, my different ability, they're like, What? We've known you for years. No way. Yeah, I do. No, it's not crazy, like terrible, but it is, it's, it's a different ability. And you're right. That hidden disability. I like how you say that the hidden disability and just, again, I guess going back to it, my last words, I'm, I could go on all day. My last words on this is kindness and being considerate and compassionate to others because you do not know ever what anyone is going through. And this stands pretty strong in the the time we're living in right now too, but you just never know. And just being kind and compassionate. And there's no reason you can't ask questions, by the way, if you want to ask, Oh, why do you leave to go to the classroom? And then the person says, Oh, it's because I have a learning disability and I take tests out of the classroom. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Good luck on your test. You know, just kindness. I'm not saying don't ask questions, please do, because then you don't, 
start rumors, you know? Okay. So at least, you know, <laughs> but Approach it with empathy. Yes. Okay. Again, let's just mic drop all day long. I am at a loss for words today, which you wouldn't think because I've been talking a lot. <laughs> my words are just not coming to me. So you're right. Empathy. So kindness, mm-hmm. compassion, uh, empathy, being positive, and just just being a decent human to others because you just don't know what they're going through, whether it's a hidden disability, a physical disability that you can see, or just someone having a bad day because it happens. So <laughs> it, it sure happens. <laughs> so <laughs> Jess, thank you so much, seriously, for just quickly hopping on here. We look awesome, by the way, if any, well, Jess yes. for sure does. <laughs> me, me, not so much. Well, whatever. If you want to see this hot mess, Katie, go on over to my YouTube channel and check out this, this episode right on YouTube. And, uh, and then you can love dress a little bit more and laugh at Katie and her hair today. So Whatever. that's a real deal. So again, thank you so much for, uh, Oh, he's ready for, for lunch. Um, Once milk. I'm really looking forward to lunch as well. Jess. <gasps> hey, Hey Clay, how are you? No words? Okay. Not quite sure. I, I, I left him speechless. <laughs> what? Can you say hi? <laughs> Not even a hardly a smile. He's like, I want food, mom. All right. Well, thank you just so much for being here today. And I just love you so much. And I can't wait till our next episode, which will probably happen sooner than later because we keep having new ideas. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Have a good day, girl. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye. (laughs) We are now recording, my friend. Welcome to the Different Ability Podcast. I am your host, Katie Fortune. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So 